Hello and welcome to Campus School. I'm Melissa Flowers and I'm going to be your child's kindergarten teacher this year. So welcome to the Campus School family. Um, I'm going to take a few minutes to go through our kindergarten parent orientation real quickly with you. And if you have not had a chance to view the classroom tour or see the Meet the Teacher video, those are both currently posted on our classroom website. So let's get started with this. Okay, housekeeping. So the doors to the school are going to open every day at 645 and students will enter through the doors um, from the front steps. They'll then wait in the lobby and they will be dismissed to their classrooms at 715. We ask that before drop off every morning, you pre-screen your child for COVID symptoms. And if they have a temperature of 100.4 degrees or higher, that you keep them at home. Um, once they're here, they can opt for a grab and go breakfast from the cafeteria. They will need to let me know that once we get into the classroom. They'll just, you know, you can let me know, you can email me that, hey, my child's gonna need a breakfast this week. Um, or your child can just simply come in and let me know that morning. Um, however, we will not be accepting cash for breakfast or lunch because we just simply cannot make change for that. So um, we are asking this year that you handle all payments for breakfast and lunch through the school nutrition website. And I have linked that for you here on this page. Once you get to that site, you will be able to see the menu, the prices, and there's an easy pay setup for you to be able to handle that through your phone. Um, other thing, okay, so we're asking that every child please send in an extra set of clothes in a Ziploc bag labeled with your child's name. And we need everything from socks to underwear. So um, you would be surprised how many children who have never had an accident in preschool may have an accident in kindergarten. We have one restroom and 20 children. So sometimes they wait and sometimes kindergartners wait too long. Um, they're usually very engaged in what we're doing and they don't want to stop. They don't want to go to the restroom when they feel the need to go. And so sometimes we have accidents. Um, your child may not be one that has an accident, but I think it's probably better safe than sorry. So if you will just send in an extra set of clothes, I will store those here. And as the season changes, I will send those back home so we can get the appropriate clothing here in school. Okay, snack. We are not doing community snacks this year, but we're asking that you send in an individual snack for your child every day. So um, as of right now, I don't believe we have any children with food allergies, but we do try to be sensitive to that. So if you can avoid certain things um, like peanut butter, that might be good. Um, I can update you that as we go along, but just make sure you send in a snack for your child every day. Okay, lunch is when you purchase a lunch from the cafeteria. We've already covered that, but when you send in your own lunch from home, we are asking this year that you please not send in anything that needs to travel from home to school. So we're asking that everything come to school in a Ziploc bag or a paper sack with your child's name labeled on it. I know there have been some questions on how to keep food cool. So what I'm personally doing with my children at home is we freeze um, Capri Suns and then as they make their lunch or we make their lunch in the mornings, we drop a frozen Capri Sun in there, which will help keep the food um, cold until lunchtime. And then at lunch, they'll also have a juice that they can drink to go along with that. So, and then at the end, everything just goes straight in the trash can. So it's easy cleanup um, and I don't have to worry about cross-contamination and extra germs. So um, we're just asking that everyone do that, please. And if you will, please make sure you put your child's name on that bag. It would be fantastic. Okay, communication. So communication is a big part of our day. Okay, so communication is a big part of our day. Daily, your child will bring home a rainbow card and it will actually be just the one quarter sheet here. And on the card, it has a space from the name, the date, and then it says, my day was blank. Um, and then we have a giant rainbow. So your child will color the rainbow to represent 
how their day went. And I'm going to explain more about the rainbows in just a few minutes. So that's daily communication. I ask that you initial that at the end of the day after you've talked to your child about their day. And then they will return it back to me. And I will explain to you how that's going to work into our day in just a moment. Um, Remind is an app that you will need to download. And on my website are instructions at the very top for how to get Remind going on your phone. Because I will be sending you emails, I'm sorry, texts regularly with Remind. Um, just different things that are going on, quick reminders about different things that we need. So it's a very important component to our classroom communication. Our classroom website will be updated weekly, and that is where you will find everything you ever needed to know about Life in the Garden. Um, on here, it does not have Twitter, but I tweet throughout the day different things that are going on. So if you want to see what your child's doing for the day or what kind of activities we've been doing, a lot of times I will be tweeting those. So if you have not started following me on Twitter, it's at CS Flower Power, um, and it's you can go back and look through all the things that we did last year will be there for you. Um, another communication tool is email. Just please allow 24 hours for a response. Progress reports are every midterm. Report cards are every nine weeks. And this year, our Friday folders um, will be coming home, of course, on Fridays, because we will not be having Daisy books. So everything that the Daisy book would have done is going to be coming from the Friday folders, the rainbow cards and all of these other components um, that are listed here. And then of course, parent-teacher conferences are as needed. So our expectations for the classroom. We have very high expectations in campus school and in our little garden. I believe that when we set the expectations high, the students are gonna rise to the occasion. And kindergarten is a phenomenal year. I have no doubt that your babies are going to just blossom this year. So I'm excited to watch it happen. It's always one of the best parts of my job. The number one rule we have in our classroom is be kind always. And whenever we have some sort of conflict, we will always go back to that. What is our number one rule? How can we exhibit that right now? So I use lots of positive encouragement in the classroom. Um, we're going to be using social skills and social stories in the classroom. Um, those are, are ways that the children can see a scenario and then start to apply it to real life. I try to implement a very respectful culture of the children um, in our classroom. So um, lots of con conflict resolution techniques are going to be used. So if your child is involved in a conflict and someone apologizes, and the other person says, it's okay, they're going to probably come home and tell you the flower said, I can't say it's okay when someone says, I'm sorry. Because you really can't. It's not okay if someone hurt you. Um, you can accept their apology. You can forgive them. You can say, I understand. But you can't say it's okay that they hurt you. So we spend a lot of time really trying to understand that concept in kindergarten. Um, so building a rainbow. That goes back to this rainbow card I was explaining. So I have a chart in my classroom of every person has a rainbow that they're going to build all day long based on their behavior in the classroom. Just like the colors of a rainbow, it starts with red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Now, everyone starts with red. Red's not bad. I know when we're in preschool, we get an idea from those little clip charts that red is there's an issue, there's a problem. There's not, it's, it's a color, it's not bad. So everyone is going to start their day on red. As we progress throughout the day, we're going to add different colors to our rainbow for good choices that we've made. So your child might come home on red, but that doesn't mean that your kid had a bad day. Um, most of the time, if they come home on like red or orange, it's just because our day was so busy. I may not have had extra time to acknowledge some of the things that were going on with that component. It could have happened in another way. Um, but I do try to be very intentional throughout the day to reward them and acknowledge them when I see good things happening. So they will build their rainbow. 
please do not expect your child to get the purple every day because that's also an unreasonable expectation. That would be perfection all day long. And we're five and six years old and we're in a new environment, learning lots of new things. So the expectation of a full rainbow every day is probably not as realistic. Um, so just know that they're gonna bring home this card. It will represent what their day was. If there are issues, I will write notes to you on the back. So if I see that something's kind of becoming maybe a problem, I might jot you a little quick note. If I know that something's really becoming serious, I'm going to call you. So what I ask you to do is look at this every evening, initial it, and send it back. Because another form of positive reinforcement that we use in the class are our fuzzies. So this is our classroom economy. Your child will earn fuzzies every day. So these are our little warm fuzzies. These are our big warm fuzzies. Little warm fuzzies are worth one. Big warm fuzzies are worth ten. They earn little warm fuzzies for doing just little things, little acts of kindness throughout the day. Um, so when they return their rainbow card, they're going to automatically, if it's been initialed by you, they will automatically get a fuzzy for the day. So that goes in their cup. They still have the rest of the day to earn additional fuzzies. Periodically, I would say weekly, but it doesn't happen weekly. But periodically, we will be shopping with our fuzzies and then we'll be purchasing rewards. Now, everyone is different, but I personally do not do trinkets or Happy Meal toys or things like that. Um, I allow the children to purchase experiences. So your child will choose a coupon from the coupon catalog and it might be something like wear their favorite costume just and they can do that. It might be um, get an extra show and tell or bring your favorite music to school. It's whatever they choose from the catalog. I will circle the item that they've chosen and send the ticket home to you. When you sign the ticket and return it, they can then redeem their coupon for whatever their price was. So again, each coupon is worth 10 points, 10 fuzzies. So it's either 10 little fuzzies or one big fuzzy. Now, it's very realistic that they could earn two or three coupons at one time, depending on how often we shop. These are super ideal when they get the big one fuzzies, because I don't get those out very often. It has to be really, really fantastic. So that is the fuzzy bit. Okay, daily bit. So we're asking that everyone wear their mask. Um, you are welcome to send an extra mask and we can keep that in um, your child's backpack. Boats and islands. I sort of explained the boats a little bit this morning in the tour, but I will take a moment to explain this again. The boats are gonna be your child's individual workspace. So our room is, is large and wonderful and I adore it, but there just is not room for enough table spaces for all the children. On a regular year, I practice flexible seating anyway, and so the boat is just um, a way to support that and still support social distancing. So the children will all have the boat, which will be their individual workspace, and those are being um, adjusted right now to fit our needs for the classroom. It will have a worktop surface on it, so they can write on the top with their papers and pencils, or they can use a clipboard on the top. We will also store their rest mats in the bottom, so they have a soft surface to sit on. Now, throughout the day, your child has an option of sitting at a table or sitting in their boat. If they choose a boat or a table or whatever, um, if they change their mind and they want to get out of the boat and stretch their legs, they can take out their yoga mat and their yoga mat is their island. So we will stretch our little islands out beside our boats so we can get out of our boats and get on our islands and stretch out, have coming time, do our work there. Um, so there's just different options for your child. So that will be, if your child comes home talking about their boat in their island, that's what they're talking about. Um, so we've already covered social distancing. We're gonna practice that. The children are gonna travel in cohorts. So your child will be in a cohort with three 
children, maybe four children. Um, cohorts will have a max of four children in them. But that will be the group they come to reading groups with. That will be the group that if they're in PE and they're playing games, that cohort will work together. And when they travel to zones in the classroom for centers, they will go with their cohort. Um, newsletter and website, I've already kind of explained that. Everything you're gonna need is gonna be on the website. I will be emailing and um, sending remind messages as well. Supplies, okay, this is a big one. So for the supplies, I'm asking that you please label everything. Um, I know that it sounds overwhelming to go, wow, she wants me to label every crayon. Well, I kind of have to have those labels because in the past we would have had community supplies. However, now if a crayon is dropped on the floor and there's no name on it, I don't know who it actually belongs to and it has to go in the trash can. So it would be really important for the kids um, so that they have everything they need if everything is just labeled. So, um, there were 12 of you who already purchased the supplies through the PTC, and that is a great um, support. However, there are a few things missing that we can choose from a classroom, so I'm going to cover those next. Um, I will also tell you, I the kit did not provide enough labels for me to label everything. So on your child's phase and day, I'm gonna send this box back home with you and ask that you go ahead and finish labeling all of the individual items that are in the box. Um, the other thing about this kit um, is that it's this box, while it's a wonderful box, it's exactly what I would have chosen at the store, this particular brand does not open well. I'm sure it opens, but I cannot get it to open. Um, it's just super challenging, and if it's this hard for me to open, I know it's going to be super hard for your children to open. So, while we still need school boxes, um, those are going to be important and they'll be super helpful for us to put together some art boxes. What I would like for your child to use throughout the day is a zipper pouch. So you can buy those at your local Walmart, grocery store, wherever, just canvas zipper pouches. They're going to be much easier for your child to manipulate and get open and close throughout the day. So go ahead and send in your box, but if you could also send in a zipper pouch, that would be great. Okay, so I think that covers school supplies. Label everything, add a zipper pouch. Um, one of the things missing from the kit was a blue folder. So we do need a plastic blue folder to be sent in, if you don't mind picking up one of those. And then um, on the website, I have listed my um, wish list is on there. This is an item that I would add to my wish list. It would be fantastic if every kid had this. This is going to be our tackle box. These can be picked up at Walmart. They're just plastic see-through sterilized containers with a flip top lid. And the reason I chose this, we need something to contain all of their supplies, their daily supplies, like their journals and their folders and their school box or their zipper bag. All of those things need a home. And so rather than having them all spread out all over the floor and worrying about cross-contamination, we're trying to put everything in a central location. So, um, if every child could bring in one of these Sterlite clear plastic containers with a flip lid, the reason we chose this lid, literally, it just pops right open. You just flip them down. They're super easy to open and close. No issues whatsoever. And this is a 15 and a quarter inch long by 11 and a half inch wide by six inches high, and it's a 12.7 quart that was purchased at Walmart. So um, this would be huge. And we're calling this our, our tackle boxes. So those are the things that would help if you don't mind sending those in. Okay, self-help skills. You can see a lot of the things that we're doing are trying to support those self-help skills. Asking for the zipper bag is gonna make a huge difference in our classroom. We have 20 kids and one teacher and so I literally cannot be in every place at one time opening all of the different things. So the more your child can do at home, the better. 
um, if they are able to buckle and unbuckle their seatbelt, fantastic. We have lots of um, safety precautions and extra measures in place for um, our current situation with the pandemic. So we want the kids to be able to manage a lot of things on their own. Um, a lot of that is fine motor skills, which is developmental, it takes time to progress. So you can support them by providing them with things to do that are gonna grow fine motor skills, like play with Play-Doh. Um, you're gonna want your child to be able to zip and button their pants on their own. You're gonna want them to be able to open a carton on their own and work their seatbelts on their own. Those are really important. Um, as soon as I have my daily schedule finalized, I will be able to share that with you on our website. I believe kindergarten is going to start lunch at 1040. Um, so that should be the case this year. Also, as far as lunch goes, please make sure you send lunch to school in a disposable container if you're sending lunch from home. Um, I think I might have mentioned that already. Um, either a plastic bag or a paper sack and you can freeze a Capri Sun, put it in the bag. By the time we go to lunch it will be thawed enough they'll have themselves a little slushy and their food will have stayed cold. So just make sure you label it when you send it in. I will be live streaming um, down the road for distance learners and you're going to be getting a, a letter on your phase a day that we will need you to sign just acknowledging that you understand that we have distance learners and there may be an occasion where your child may be in a, a shot of a, a live stream video. We do not have field trips or any extra events planned for this year as of right now. We are hoping that will change down the road. Um, if not, we will certainly be planning some virtual field trips for our kiddos to go on. Homework, um, we, were, we are not going to start our regular homework yet. We usually wait to start that in September after we have all of our assessments taken care of and I can really um, know where your, your kid is falling and what they need for support. So that's going to wait. Um, however, family homework is starting. So first thing I need for you to do is find the family picture and put that in a frame. Now, please do not send in your most um, valuable, beautiful picture frame. I suggest that you take a DVD case, take the contents out of the DVD case and out of the cover and slide your family picture right in the sleeve of that. That's a perfect frame for kindergarten. They can, it's travel and go. They can have it with them at their boat or at their seat or on their island, and then it can go back on the shelf at the end of the day and no damage will be done. Um, so that's the first thing I want them to bring with them when they come in with their supplies to their family day. The second thing is um, an assignment that we're doing for number one, to support social distancing. Number two, it's going to help be a comfort item for your child, and it's going to be a way for all of us to learn about your child here at school. So I'm asking that every kindergartner create a set of wings to wear. So let me show you. I've started on my wings. They're made from cardboard, and mine are not completed yet, but they're made from cardboard. And they, here is what my wings look like right now, and I'm still in the process of working on them. I just have the two wings duct taped together right there to allow for some flexibility. And I am going to put some holes in it so that I can add some um, elastic straps for either like t-shirt strips to tie on the wings. So those wings are gonna support social distancing because when we're in our cohorts and we're traveling to the different zones, we get so excited. We want to play with our friends so much and I want them to be able to play. But we also have to follow the safety precautions that are in place. So when we're wearing our wings, we can't get too snugly close with the next person. So we can still play with our friends and provide some social distancing. So when we go on the playground, when we're in our zones in our classroom, we're going to have our wings on. Also, you can see I started decorating my wings. 
your child can decorate their wings with their favorite things. They can decorate it with pictures of their family, some of their favorite toys, their favorite colors, their drawings. However you want to decorate the wings, I encourage you to do that. So, um, I started a sample here for the kiddos. There, this one is 24 inches from tip to tip. So, um, if you could do that, that would be fantastic. And, okay, so I'm going to keep going. If you have questions about the wings, I will try to answer them. I will say it's a brand new project. I've never made wings before for kindergarten. So, it will be a little trial and error, I'm sure, at first. But, that is technically our first family homework assignment. So, University students, we will have them. They will be starting sometime in September. Um, when I have more information, I will gladly share that with you. Room mom, I need a room mom. Um, I'm not really sure what your um, responsibilities would be right now, but having a room mom is very important. So I would love to have someone that is a point person that I could go to. Um, if you're not able to be that person down road, when hopefully uh, the school opens back up, um, I do also need home helpers, and I have some travel tubs that I can send home with different things that I need help with. Um, if you're willing to do that, just shoot me an email and let me know, and I will gladly send you a travel tub, and it'll have all the things that you need to be successful in it. You can just complete it and then send it back to school, okay? All right, next on this list is shoes. Um, we are asking that the children wear no tie shoes this year. Um, because of the procedures in place um, with the pandemic, we don't really need to be tying shoes throughout the day. So we're asking that you use no tie shoes, either slip on or Velcro, um, something along those lines. They do need tennis shoes for PE. So keep that in mind. Um, we are asking for rest mats. I know there's been a couple of different school supply lists, but we are asking for rest mats. If you ordered a kit, your mat is already here. If you are purchasing a kit outside of the school, then you will need to pick one of those up. Okay, Marvelous Me um, is a way that we celebrate your kiddo. So, when your child is Marvelous Me, um, and I try to do those somewhere along to sort of correspond with their birthday, uh, but when your child is Marvelous Me, on the Monday of that week, your child will bring in some pictures to put on our Marvelous Me board. Um, you can make a poster, although you don't have to. You can send in loose pictures and I just plug them in the chart. Um, your child will stand. Part of our, our standards for kindergarten are speaking and listening skills. So your child will stand on the stage in our classroom and share the events of the people that are in these photographs. Um, on Tuesday, your child will get to showcase a special talent that they may have. So that's always fun to see what kinds of things they might have been working on over the summer or just things that they enjoy. On Wednesday, I'm asking that you write a letter to your child that I can read here at school so that your child and your friends will know just how special they are in your eyes. On Thursday, they can bring in a favorite book and I will make time that day to read that for them. And on Friday, our little bunnies will go home with them for the weekend. Now, I have real bunnies, but they're not able to come to school right now because of the pandemic. So, I will just be sending home stuffed bunnies. If you will make sure that you return them on Monday, that way I can quarantine them for the rest of the week until the next person needs to take them home on the following Friday. That would be fantastic. So, um, okay, so that is Marvelous Me. Your child will also be the line leader all week long for Marvelous Me. Last thing on this page is tardies. So um, if you have questions about tardies or attendance, please direct all of that to Mrs. Wilson and her email is wilsonk at rcschools.net. And if you want your child, if you're checking out early or something like that, if you check out after 11 o'clock, they will be counted for a full day. So that's just something for you to um, be aware of. 
Okay, so phase in is either Monday or Tuesday, and thank you all so much for signing up for that so quickly. I appreciate that very, very much. Um, I've included here the information that Dr. King shared with you on phase in, so you can um, review that real quickly. They will be here all day. Please send in their supplies, their extra clothes, their mask, their snack, their lunch. Um, if you have their family homework assignments finished by their phasing day, um, definitely send those in. Those are going to be supporting our classroom culture and environment and some of the things that we're going to be doing. So those are pretty important. Um, the first full day of kindergarten is going to be Wednesday the 19th. And so we will have all friends here all day. So that's going to be exciting. On your phasing day, your child's going to bring home a sheet of this. Um, this is actually two, so you're going to want to cut it in half. Oh, there it went. Those are um, car tags. So the way these car tags work um, is that you're going to want to display it in your vehicle for dismissal. I always cut them in half, give the extras to friends or family that may be participating in picking up your child, and then I always took a clothes hanger and just hung it on a clothes hanger and put it on my on my my mirror in the center and then when car duty was over i took it off it's very important that these are prominently displayed especially for kindergartners because your babies are new here and you will learn very quickly that everybody gets to know everybody in this building super quick however your babies are the new ones so um, the only people that are going to know them right now are mrs hawkins and i so it's going to be important that you have this posted for us okay all right dismissal regular dismissal that would be any day after phase in because the phase in dismissal is going to look different for all of us so um, it's going to start at 2 30 you're going to line up in the long line down on burton street um, please be um, careful to try not to block driveways as there will be people, residents who live on that street who may need in and out of their, their driveway. Please have your yellow name tag clearly displayed and um, school zones are cell-free zones and that says school groups. I'm not sure what it says that, so I apologize for that, uh, but they're cell phone free zones. So please make sure that you are not on your cell phone during that time. Um, just for the safety of all involved. Um, please wait for your child to be escorted, stay in your vehicle, wait for your child to be escorted out, um, and then we will ask that your child be able to get in the car and do their seatbelt on their own. We're asking that parents please not get out of their vehicle. So, um, hoping that they can, can do that pretty quickly on their own. If possible, we would very much like for your child to not have to cross over in front of or behind a vehicle. We try to load everyone in on the right hand side if possible. So it, it would be helpful if car seats or boosters could be moved to the passenger side of the vehicle. I know sometimes it's not possible, but we're asking if you can do that, that would be very beneficial. And then once your child's in, you won't be able to drive away right away because there's other children moving around. So you're gonna wait for the person directing traffic to signal to you that it is safe to move. So um, that is how dismissal is going to work. And I believe as of today, you will not be turning into the back parking lot for dismissal. Instead, you will be pulling just straight around to the front for dismissal. Okay. All right, I think we made it through everything. Wow. I'm sure that you will still have questions. I'm sure that you're probably feeling a little overwhelmed. It's going to be great. We're going to have a wonderful kindergarten year. Um, it's going to be memorable and magical and exciting. And the most important part is that we stay in contact um, so that we can work out any kinks as we go along. So if you have any questions, please, please, please email those to me. Um, if I see that those are questions that are becoming kind of universal, I can clarify for the whole group so that everyone is on the same page. And if you are not receiving emails from me, maybe check your junk folder or your clutter folder or something like that because my messages might be going there. So anyway, I wish you all a wonderful evening 
and I am so looking forward to seeing your babies very, very soon. It's not much longer until kindergarten starts, so it's going to be fantastic, and I hope you all have a great evening.